So we're asked to sketch the graph of our vector valued function here. And I've sketched out some grids for us so that we can view this from two different ways. One, we're going to try and sketch the graph of it using three dimensions, and then we'll, we'll kind of look at it from the top down as well. Um, when graphing these, it's often you're, that you're able to really determine what they look like as long as they're not too complicated. And in this case, this is kind of a classic place we start with. If we look at the x-coordinate, uh, we've got x is equal to cosine t, and y is equal to sine t. And if we think about our polar coordinates, we have in polar x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So this is reflecting a very similar behavior in the xy plane with r equal to 1. So we're really looking at something that's circular as time goes forward. So what we're seeing in that xy plane then is essentially as time moves on, we're just sort of going around and around in a circle looking at it from the top down. So now we can add in the z component, which just says that vertically, this thing, as it's, as it's looping around, vertically it's growing in a linear fashion. So what we would expect to see is that as it's looping around, it's also going up. And we'll just take time to be positive here. And what we'll see is something that looks kind of like this. And I'm going to do my best to try and draw this out in a really nice fashion. But um, effectively, you get something it sort of loops itself up like a bit of a spring. I've actually um, graphed this here in GeoGebra so that we can get an even better look at what's really happening. Again, you can see uh, over here at the left, we've got um, sine and cosine giving us our circular nature and then um, the vertical growing according to x. So we have down here, looking from the top down, our circle. And uh, you can see that we've got this helical shape that's going up, um, and again, growing in a linear fashion. So these are really classic and, and kind of nice starting places for us to think about how we might be able to visualize these things. Um, we also have tools that we can use, like GeoGebra, that will help us um, to visualize these curves as well. So let's look at another example here. And uh, here we've got that x is equal to t. And we've got here that y equals t in the xy plane. And if we just sort of allow ourselves to note that these can be, um, these parameters to really be interchangeable, what we could have is really maybe x equals x and y equals x. And what this just does is reveal to us a little bit cleaner um, what it is that we're seeing in the xy plane. So this obviously doesn't provide anything, but here we've got y equals x which is just the identity line. So if we were to look down in the xy plane on this particular space curve, what we would see is just the line y equals x happening. And then what you can see again here, looking at the z component, tells us what's happening vertically. So vertically, it's behaving like a cosine function. So again, in the xy plane, over here in our three-dimensional graph, um, we've got the line y equals x happening something like this. But then on top of that line, we've got our cosine that's taking place as well. So vertically, it's behaving like a cosine function. So that would do something like, I'm going to try and draw this again so that it's about as accurate as I can. But um, it's going to do something kind of like this. But it's doing it along that line y equals x, again, from the top down. Um, we're seeing a straight line, but if we look at it horizontally, we're actually seeing that cosine function going across. You've got to graph this in GeoGebra so we can get a better picture of it. So again, looking from the top down, there's our line y equals x. Looking horizontally, we see our cosine function happening, and this is how this space curve is being traced out. So again, a pretty simple one to look at and try and visualize if these get more complicated than that then generally we just want to graph them using some kind of tool um, online or, or you know, whatever we have available to us. But generally speaking, these things can get very complicated, and so you know, we, we wouldn't necessarily want to do that by hand. So for this third example of graphing, I'm going to show a different style here, and it's just another option. This one only exists in two dimensions here, uh, and that's fine. 
Um, what we can do is a, as an additional option is sometimes um, come up with the sketch, particularly in these two-dimensional settings, by just removing the parameter. So if we take x equal to t cubed and y equal to t squared as um, the components indicate, then we could say solve this one out for x by saying that t is equal to the cube root of x, and then simply sub this back in to the other equation. So in this case, it looks like y is equal to x to the 2 thirds, which is a fairly straightforward function to graph, right? We would just go ahead and um, make a quick graph here, and then of course it looks something like, like this. So eliminating the parameter works particularly well when we're dealing with something that just uh, exists in two dimensions. It can also help us in three dimensions sometimes, just depends again on, on what the function is that we're presented with.